Welcome back. Um, maybe if they called it gluteal fat grafting, it wouldn't quite be as popular because that's the technical term for a surgical butt lift, often called a Brazilian butt lift, which is explosively popular these days. And depending on who's doing it, it is excessively risky as well. In 2020, butt lifts performed in the United States alone by certified plastic surgeons topped 40,000, even with the pandemic. Check out the comparison to 2015. It's twice the number from just five years previous. But that is nothing compared to the real number, the actual number, because many butt lifts in the United States and elsewhere abroad, they're not done by certified plastic surgeons at all. Many are done by cosmetic surgeons whose training requirements are far less rigorous with or without board certification, and the board certification is totally voluntary. Many aren't even done in hospitals. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, let's start with the process, how these butt lifts are actually performed. And it's kind of gross, so if you're squeamish, you might want to plug your ears for a second. Uh, fat is sucked out of a patient's tummy or thighs, and then it's injected into their backsides. All the while, the patient is out cold, sedated. A lot could go wrong, including tissue damage, nerve damage, long-term pain, paralysis, and even death. Ugh, those pictures, ugh, gross. In 2017, butt lifts had the highest death rate of any cosmetic surgery in the United States. Let that sink in. The highest death rate of any cosmetic surgery in the U.S. There is a staggering financial cost as well, because insurance covers none of this. Patients pay many thousands of dollars out of pocket, which of course then encourages bargain hunting, which only ups the risk. And because it is so lucrative, it attracts some doctors with shady or minimal or non-existent credentials. So what is an unsuspecting butt lift seeker to do? Let's ask my guest, because he's smart. He knows this stuff. His name is Dr. David Schaefer. He is a double board certified plastic surgeon who has performed many of these surgeries and he's here with me live. Okay, doc. Uh, first and foremost, why are they so dangerous? I mean, there's plenty of surgeries that are done every day, all day, all over the world, but why is this one so dangerous? Part of the danger involved with doing a Brazilian butt lift is that you're blindly putting the cannula into the patient's butt. And if you're not putting the cannula for injecting the fat into the right layer, you could inject it into a blood vessel, you could inject it into the muscle, or an area where you don't want it to go. If the fat accidentally goes into a blood vessel, it can then travel to the heart and cause them to have a heart attack or a stroke. And so this is why it's very dangerous and you need to go to somebody who has experience doing it and who is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Okay, and then on the bottom of our screen, it says cosmetic surgery versus plastic surgery. I think a lot of people think they're synonymous, but there's a very big difference between a cosmetic surgeon and a plastic surgeon. So explain what that difference is. Definitely, and it's a very important differentiation. A plastic surgeon is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. So they've gone through a residency training. Many of them have also gone through a fellowship training. And then they've gone through the board certification process, which teaches not only the academic knowledge, technical skill, but also the ethics involved with treating patients and taking care of patients, including the safety for patients. Cosmetic surgery, aesthetic surgery, and other names that sound similar to plastic surgery they're not two true plastic surgeons and they haven't gone through the rigorous training that a board certified plastic surgeon has done. So we're looking at some pictures of some very beautiful ladies and I want to be crystal clear. We don't know if that, you know, Chris Maloney or any of those ladies, Sophia Vergara or Scarlett Johansson or anybody else, we don't know if they got butt lifts, but we do know that they have really super pretty butts. And a lot of people are trying to emulate what they look like, right? I mean, there's, you know, there's Kim Kardashian and J-Lo and Rihanna and Cardi B and Nicki Minaj and Beyonce and, and Sofia Vergara you saw earlier. And then, of course, Scar ScarJo, um, the, the Williams sisters, they are all very um, fashionable. They're body types, which I think is troublesome to hear about fashion and body types anyway. But do you hear people wanting butt lifts because they talk about these, these beautiful celebrities with the impossible butts? There definitely are trends and people see things on Instagram and the internet and 
in magazines and they say, I want to look like this person or I want to look at that, like that person. So there, there are trends and people are copying them, but there's also cultural differences and there are different ideas of what beautiful is. So it's not necessarily something wrong, but before you do a surgery, you do talk to a patient about their motivation for why they're doing the surgery so that you can understand it and make sure that you're going to get them an outcome that they're going to be happy with. I mean, every time I see Kim Kardashian, I just can't understand how she can be so perfect <laughs> and so incredibly curvy. So, but here's something I want to play for you, and I'm sure you've already seen it, but also for our audience in case they haven't seen it. I saw it on my Instagram earlier, and I just about fainted because it was so poignant to the point, and it's something that I have thought for my entire lifetime, and I want to play. This is a yoga guru named Cassie Ho, and it's, um, it's her TikTok that she released on Body Type. Take a look at this. What I would look like if I had the perfect body throughout history. In the 2020s, Instagram booty models were invented and everybody followed. But just a decade before, thigh gaps were super in. I mean, why would you want your thighs to touch? In the 2000s, who can forget the Victoria's Secret Angel? What started as a male fantasy ended up becoming the beauty standard. In the 90s, emaciated was in. They called it heroin chic. In the 50s, we were introduced to the hourglass figure. Soft and voluptuous with a Coke bottle body was in. But in the Roaring Twenties, you had to look like a little boy. No boobs and no hips. Then rewind to the Italian Renaissance, where having a full figure was a sign of being well-fed and being wealthy. So what's in store this year? How about we stop treating our bodies like a fast fashion trend? Okay, she is my new favorite person, Cassie Ho. <laughs> stop treating your body like a fashion trend. Um, but boy, that filter is something else as well. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. What people should know, though, is that these things aren't without consequence, right? If you go in and you want a Beyonce butt or a Kardashian butt, this thing that I read kind of made me freak out a little. It says that in a lot of these cases, the skin around your butt can start to resemble a bad burn, and then it can turn black and even blister. What is, what's happening there if that's a side effect? Right, so that's not necessarily a side effect, but it's a complication of the surgery. So that's very rare that can happen. And as I mentioned, if they accidentally inject the fat into the blood vessel, then you're blocking the blood supply to the skin. The skin is no longer receiving oxygen, and then the skin can actually die, and it can turn black and, and get a blister. And that's why it's very important to go to somebody who has experience and knows what they're doing. The pictures you're showing do show very rudimentary and older ways of doing the Brazilian butt lift. In our office, we have very high-tech equipment where we have pressure monitors within the cannulas, and it'll actually stop the machine if you go into the wrong area. So, that, so there are things that you can do to help for patient safety and try to maximize the, the result for the patient while maximizing their safety as well. And then number one, uh, look for a board certified plastic surgeon, not necessarily a cosmetic surgeon. And don't try to just look like J-Lo. We can't all look like J-Lo. We're not supposed to. Dr. David Schaefer, thanks for being on. Really appreciate it. Stay safe. Thanks for having me. Have a great night. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.